This time on Flipping Bangers. Gus is on a mission. Tell me if I've been a lovesick fool, right? I I'm all ears. He sees a diamond in the rough. You're going to love it when you dive it. I don't want to go anywhere near that, because no. that could blow up in my hands. And if we can smooth off the rough edges... Oh we'll get a chance to shine. We have definitely turned back the clock on this car. It's definitely got a new lease of life. We've said goodbye to our day jobs and invested our own hard-earned cash as we try and make it in the cutthroat world of second-hand cars. You've got to buy well, but you've got to sell well. We have a goal. We need to double our money. If we put 500 quid in, we need to see a £1,000 back. But we're forced to the very bottom of the market. We buy cars that nobody else wants. Who else would buy that car? <laughs> Can we keep our business afloat, flipping bangers? There's so many things to do to this car. We've turned our backs on our regular jobs and attempted to carve out a new living by buying and selling cheap cars. Evicted from our previous workshop by angry neighbours, Will has sorted us out with a new base, and apart from having no working toilet, it feels like home. We've raided our bank accounts, and this time we have enough to invest around £500 to £1,500 on each car. It's time for us to choose a new project. But what will it be? No, I was thinking, I, I don't want to see anything fancy, nothing fragile. Yeah, I don't want broken, and I definitely don't want rusty. No, I think something, something strong, some sort of robust engineering. Ooh. Yeah, quality and substance. I think our collective minds are drifting towards Stuttgart and Munich, aren't they? Yeah, well, we are here to make some money. Mm. So let's not mince our words. Let's think BMW. Mm -hmm. Let's think Mercedes. Yeah. So maybe 5 Series or some sort of E-Class. Yeah. I'd say at the moment, A90S 5 Series. It can be a little bit underpriced. Yeah, to sell, yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. But I just, I just think that 5 Series, E-Class, C-Class, these are the sort of cars that everybody goes for. I think maybe we should go a bit more off-piste. You know what we haven't thrown into the mix? Audi 100. Audi 100 Avant, the estate. Really rare. Yeah. I think, I think it, they'd be worth more mm. than either of those. Look. Yeah, no, I've not seen one of those for years and... Yeah. No, I'm sticking with the 5 Series. 5 Series, 5 Series. <laughs> I can't say it enough. I really like the look of this Audi 100, though. Oh, yeah. 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 It's only done 130,000 miles. Is it? Mm. How about you call up the owner of the Audi? Mm. Good idea. Yeah, see if he's got a nice 5 Series. <laughs> <laughs> I might call him anyway. <laughs> After a little spell on the dog and bone, that's phone, we pack up and head off. Which car will we see? A 5 Series that Will wants, or do we disregard his feelings and look at the wonderful Audi 100? Do you, uh, do you remember in the 70s and 80s, there was a, there was a radio programme where the hapless people used to phone in and confess to sins that they didn't really regret doing, to the accompaniment of tears and strings? Yeah, I do remember. I used to quite like it, actually. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was quite good. Well, what I'm not liking about it at the moment is this is beginning to make me think that you have some sort of... Something you need to get off your chest, maybe? No, no, what gives you that idea? <laughs> uh, well, nothing, of course. Ah, well, a, a bit, I suppose. <laughs> Go on, what? I know what it is. I know exactly what it is. I've worked out already. <laughs> right, so we're off to see a car, yes. Yes. Right. Let me just hazard a guess that it's not the BMW 5 Series that I want. It's that <laughs> Audi that you want, isn't it, okay, Gus? Okay, okay, okay. Let me, let, me, let me tell you the information about the car, and you can tell me if I've been a lovesick fool, right? You, you... I, I'm all ears. <laughs> Go for it. You know, right. the, you know there's that website where you can type in the type of car you got, and it will tell you how many are on the road in the UK at that point, yeah? So yeah. if you do that to an Audi 100 Avant, it comes up with 25 cars. And I, in my mind, low supply means high price. OK, yeah. But that, that, that car, it was on auction, this car, mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it was bid and sold, but it was never paid for. So I took the opportunity to sneak in and get us a booking for it. Oh, well done you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, it was a great point in Audi's development. And I think they're just an underloved car, because 
they, Audi were trying really hard. They had that whole sort of flush fitting glass mm -hmm. and that sort of zero point three coefficient of drag. You know, it was they were they were on fire when they were making these cars. Yeah, they were quite technologically advanced. Yeah. But yeah. if I'm not happy with it, then you've got absolutely nothing to worry about, I'm, I'm sure. That's exactly what I was hoping you'd say. Oh, well, that is good, then. <laughs> there we are. The owner of the Audi is at work, so we're left to our own devices. Ooh. Uh, look, we're... Matty said he'd left the keys look. with his sister, so we can get the keys, you can drive it, and then you can see the whole picture. I mean, look at this side. This side looks Gus, fantastic. you're creating a diversion tactic, I can tell. Look at those wheels, original wheels. Yeah, They're lovely. Rare, very rare. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, Matty said he'd left the keys for the car with you. Yes, he has. Let me just grab them Brilliant. for you. Brilliant, thank you. You're going to love it. You're going to love it when you drive it. It's sophisticated. Lovely. Here we go. Thank you. I reckon we'll be 10 or 15 minutes. Is that all right? OK. All right. Enjoy. Cool. Thank you very much. What, sophisticated like me? No, sophisticated like a sophisticated thing that's sophisticated. Got some nice bits on it, hasn't it? Look, <laughs> tinted green glass, an electric sunroof. <laughs> it's got all these period features. Paintwork, not too bad. And the wheels, look at those wheels. They're rare and they're in really good nick. They're good. Admittedly, yes, it's got a load of nice features on your side, mm -hmm. but starting around here, there's been some damage on this bonnet, which has been repaired, and the repair's all fallen off. This side of the car actually looks like it's been to war and I'm lost. I'm not looking at that side, I'm looking at this side. Look, it's got its original load liner in there. Brilliant, but look down here. Look at that valance. It looks like they've reversed over a cow twice. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let me show you something down here. A piece of beautiful automotive art which no-one can say isn't a brilliant thing. 2.3, five-cylinder, Audi engine. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Oh, I do know these are good engines. So, I mean, let's see what it looks like. ta -da! Ooh. That's amazing. The bonnet actually works and stays out. That's handy, isn't it? Yeah. And, well, oh, actually, it doesn't look too bad in there, which is kind of pleasing to see. I mean, they're sort of bulletproof sort, and if, it, yeah, if yeah. it runs all right, then it's a corker. Yeah, yeah. It's just old, isn't it? It is, yeah. I think we should drive it. I think you should drive it, and I know that you're not a very good driver, but I think you. you should drive it just to see you're going to like it. This is a diversionary tactic, Gus. I know what you're doing. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, anyway, this is supposed to be your treat, not mine. You're going to love it. Right, well, let's see. <laughs> it's headlining. <laughs> that is falling down there, and I notice the whole of the back of it's held up with carpet tacks by the looks of it. Yeah, yeah, we have. But look what we have got. Look at the grey velour on these seats, which mm. is in fantastic nick, isn't it? Yeah. And look, all this, the dash, it's like a time warp. It's really good, isn't it? I must admit, it is a good period piece. Radio's missing. But what I'm really, really worried about is like, are our potential buyers going to warm to this car? Because it's not really something they know. Not like a BMW 5 Series. No, but the bare bones of this car are good. I know it's got issues on the outside. I know it's got issues on the inside. But if you take the age of the car, what it is as a whole, I think it's amazing. Is this your last ditch attempt to try and win me over, is it? <laughs> Go on, you are, I can tell. Go on, Will. You're going to love it, you're going to love it, you're going to love it. Actually, I, I think I might. I'm sorry I'm being a bit down on it, but... Ooh, that sound nice. It does sound nice. <laughs> the Audi even has a current MOT. What more do you want? I hope you know I'm being really generous letting you drive this car. A, because you're a terrible driver, and B, because I actually really want to drive this car. I know, I'm a really terrible driver, and I know that you really want to drive this car. And you're not actually being generous in letting me drive the car. If that's to your own ends, mate. You're just trying to win me over. It's an ulterior motive. And the you, car... You can't work that one on me. The car will win you over. Well, Listen to that engine, it sounds great. I mean, it, the engine does sound great. I mean, it's very crisp and, um, and it pulls really nicely. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, cracking little engine. No worries there at all. Well, look, we got no, we got no um, stereo, have we? So we should let that be our in-car entertainment system. Oh, that's a perfect motorist solution, that is. <laughs> and I don't want to sort of wax lyrical about cars of the 80s or 90s, but I will do a bit. I mean, <laughs> they, 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 they built some great cars. Yeah, they Some do. really brilliant cars in that period, and this is one of them. It's really solid, really nice. They were trying hard, weren't they? Audi. They were definitely trying to impress 
BMW and Mercedes with their ability to create a really good car, and they really did create a good car with this. Yeah, it's as tight as a drum. I mean, it's comfortable to drive, and it does feel like the sort of thing you could drive around in all day long, no worries at all. The bare bones of what we've got here, we've, for the age, we've got a really, really good car, haven't we? And it's cool, I think it's cool. Surely sticking to the standard stuff that people like, you know, the mainstream thing, isn't that a better idea? I don't know, I think if you, you find the car and everything else will work itself out, it'll all fall into place. And no sooner have those fateful words been spoken. The um, temperature gauge is getting quite warm, Gus. Yeah, I can smell it. Can you? I can. I can. Smell something. Yeah, you can smell vaporising coolant. Yeah, it smells like it's leaking something somewhere. And in actual fact, <clears throat> there's a little bit of steam coming out of here as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 dear! Yeah. Uh, that's not good. Right, OK, I better find somewhere to pull over a bit sharpish, then. We should have a look, shouldn't we? I think that's what the steam is, isn't it? Oh, 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 oh that's that's leaking. Yeah. It's a split. I think it's split down the middle, isn't it? I don't want to go anywhere near that because no, that could blow should, up in my hands. Should we get it home? I think we ought to. Yeah, Come definitely. Slowly and steadily, I think, will probably be the best thing. There is a saying: you break it, you buy it. So do we want it or do we not want it? Well, I think you like this car so much, it would be mean for me to say no. So it's, it's a yes. All we've got to do is work out the price and see if we can do a deal, I suppose. £1,200. OK, well, let's go and have a haggle then. Go and sort it out properly. No, we can put it on the trailer now. Is there something you're not telling me? To show interest in the car, to get the first view in, I had to show how interested we were and I sort of had to buy the car. I had to, really. We've owned this car the entire time. Yeah, You've pulled the bit. wool over my eyes, haven't you? Well, not really, but a bit, yeah. But, but to be fair, if it wasn't as advertised, we could have cancelled it all, couldn't we? That's funny. That's clever. Right, I'm off to get the trailer, but I think if there are any stinky jobs on this, they might be on your list, not mine. That seems fair enough. It's the first time Gus has ever bought a car without my say-so. But, in fairness, he did get my agreement before telling me. Maybe it makes for a more efficient process. Who knows? <laughs> well, Gus, <laughs> you surprised me there, and I, I am pretty amused by it. Well, I don't like dishonesty generally, and I certainly don't like dishonesty between us. Yeah. But, but he was on the phone, he was saying, are you serious? I've got people calling me. Are you serious when you're going to come and see it? And he just lost the sale. And I thought, you know what? It's just easier. It was 1,200 quid. It was just easier to do it. Well, I think you've done the right thing, and I really like the car as well. You've obviously you've pushed out your intentions a little bit further. You've clinched a deal. We've got a very smart car there. Yeah, I'd like to have met him. That would have been nice. But yeah. you know, it's not. It's just. It's not. If it's not to be, it's not to be. But he seemed a very genuine man, I have to say. And I don't think a thousand two hundred pounds is too much. I think it's probably what the car's worth. Not too much. Not too little. About right, I think. We've only looked over the Audi quickly, so the next day, we come at it fresh. You know, since we got this car in that rather unusual way... Yes, granted. Yeah, I've actually started to quite like it. Good. Which is only... Well, it's different, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. a different car. It's quite a cool-looking car. For the money we paid for this car, it seems like we have actually got a real bargain. Yeah, I, I am genuinely pleased that you've come round to it in that way. I really am, because I'm not proud of the way we got it. But it had to be got, and that was just the way of it. But I agree with you completely. I love the lines of this car. And it's the, it's the estate. It's not the saloon. The saloon does nothing to me. It's the estate. I just think it's cool, don't you know? Yeah, it, I think it's really groovy. So let's start thinking about the jobs that we've got to do on this car. And yep. I think it is quite fair to say the car speaks for itself, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we've got all this paint work down the side of the car, the bonnet, and those great big dents in the back as well. Yeah. Well, what worries me about this is, slightly looking at it, that it's a metallic, isn't it? And we've done flat colours before, but we've never done a metallic before. And I wonder if that just needs a bit more research or something. OK, well, let's, um, let's approach it from this point of view. How about... We get stuck into it and do all of the prep work for the painting. Yeah. 
and then see how we feel when it comes to the big moment. Yeah, see how brave we feel. Yeah, exactly. Same as usual, then. Yeah, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, it's the dent, isn't there? The dent. Yeah, look at this dent and that dent down there. Now, both of those are going to need pulling out and they're going to need a really good job doing on them because that's not just a straightforward filler job. No. And the one in the back as well, that's definitely not a straightforward filler job. Bit of panel work's required on yeah. this. So, if we recap them with this car... Yeah. We've got a header tank. We know the header tank's leaking, don't we? Because it do. was on the test drive. Yes, we do. So yeah. we've got a window that doesn't go up, so we need to investigate that, see what that is. Mm -hmm. And we've got a headlining, which one of us... Yeah, I get it, possibly me. <laughs> OK, <laughs> yeah. got to do that. But that's it. So that's all we've got on this car. <laughs> so that's amazing if that's all it is, actually. It is, yeah. I mean, the rest of the interior is mint. Yeah. The car drives really, really nicely. Yeah? Yeah. Is it conceivable that this car will go through the workshop without any extracurricular activity needed? Yeah. You know that saying about canteen chickens before they hatch and all of that? And I've just done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our machine-like process is primed and ready. Pickies first. Right, OK, so I've got some really nice pictures of the Audi, which I'm currently putting up on the adverse at the moment, and it's looking good. I'm not using the pictures of the side that needs painting, because by the time we sell the car, that will all be done, and the car will be MOT'd and ready to go. I have been doing my research, because the pricing I'm finding a little bit difficult to work out. There aren't that many of these cars left, so you'd be forgiven for thinking that's going to escalate the value. Totally not true. This is not a Ferrari, this is an Audi. So I've got to come in with a decent price where we make some money. I'm thinking around about the sort of 3,500 quid mark because that's not too high. Because if it's too high, people will ignore it. If it's too low, people get suspicious. It's a quandary, isn't it? Knowing that our car is going to be very good when it's done, 3,500 would be quite a keen price people who like these cars. They're not frightened by those figures. So this is my final decision, which I'm going to put in the computer. 3,760 quid. That should do it. That won't frighten people off, and it might draw the right people in. With a completely arbitrary price agreed on the Audi, it's welcomed into the greasy cocoon that is the workshop. And since the Audi's overheating, let's get that sorted, as non-driving trumps scruffy paint. Well, we know from our test drive that the Audi has got a split in its header tank, just here. So I'm going to replace it. And they're not, they're not difficult to get hold of, and they're not expensive, which is great. But what it's going to do is it's going to mean that, that the, at this Audi engine, this five-cylinder engine, is going to run beautifully smoothly and beautifully reliably. Because the person who buys this car isn't going to be buying an estate car to pop down the shops in. They're going to be buying an Audi 100 Avant. They're going to be super cool and they're going to have their double bass in there and the rest of the band in the back. Or they're going to be surfers and they're going to put their surfer boards on the back and they're going to go down to the Witterings or down to Newquay. That's the plan, anyway. Poor Gus is away with the fairies today, but he gets the first job, which is removing the header tank, which allows for expansion of the water in the system. He unscrews it and removes the plumbing. We ordered a new part on the way back here for 35 quid, and it's arrived already. And once it's topped up with coolant, it's good to go. So that's a relatively cheap fix to get our Audi up and running reliably again, which makes a bit of a change in this workshop. An uneventful first day, then, but cheap. The overheating is cured, and we're off home to dream about how we find those cool owners that Gus is obsessing about. It's the second day on the Audi project, and another niggle is a potential issue with the brakes. And since we're getting it to run right, before we get it looking right, we're having a closer look to see what's wrong. So one of, the, uh, one of the problems with this car when we were test driving it is that the brakes were binding on. And I figure it's probably the handbrake that's binding on. So we've got a car that's sat for a very long time. We have a handbrake cable which degrades in time and causes massive friction. And we have a very, very tired-looking spring here. And this is what operates the lever 
that puts the handbrake on and off. So any amount of friction in the cable will cause a great deal of loading on this, what is looking like a very, very tired spring up here. So I've got a new spring and I've got a new cable. First up, this lot needs to be disconnected from the handbrake up at the front. There's a bolt underneath the car which is responsible for that. So it's out, and if you'd like to accompany me to the bench, I'll show you this cable. So here we have our old handbrake cable. As you can see, if you pull it, there's a lot of friction in the cable. So just think, every time you let the handbrake off, that little spring has got to let this cable all the way back round. And honestly, I think it's going to struggle, because the new one... Oh, hello. Look at that. Easy peasy. That's going to fly off, isn't it? And we've got a new spring to replace our tired old one. So the combination of our new spring and our new cable, I think it's definitely going to do the job. So far, so good. Another £30, that's all. This is going to be a cheap car. So, as with everything, there's a bit of creep on this job. I thought it was going to be really easy. I thought it was going to put the spring on, put the cable back on, and everything would be good. But there's a cam in here, this one here, and as you pull on the handbrake, it operates a little rod here, which closes up the calipers and applies the handbrake. And on the one that's on the car, this is obviously very worn, and the rod is poking into here, so I can't, I can't get this can on here round far enough to put the pin back in. So I'm going to have to take the caliper apart now and see if I can wiggle it out somehow, put the new one in. In Gus's excitement during the test drive, we didn't notice, but there's a warning light on on the binnacle pointing to warm brakes. So I take a look. Ah, I see what they've done here. That wire there is where the sensor that goes in the brake pad should plug into the wiring loom of the car. But it seems that they're fitted pads that don't have a sensor on them. So to get around the problem of the light on the dashboard being on, they've actually bridged the contact within this plug to, to solve that. Now, I have got the correct brake pads. That bit is the bit that should plug into this. Now I've just got to hope that I can clean this up and get this bridging wire out without damaging the socket at all, and hopefully it should all be OK. But if I damage the plug when I remove the bodge, it might break that part of the wiring loom. So, gently, gently, dab a lubricant, and then a good pull. So I remove the caliper and I wind back the piston, and this facilitates the new pads which I'm putting in. And then I re-clamp the caliper back on. It's extremely frustrating. Gonna go on. Right, well, that's the caliper back on, which is great because we've got new pads in there as well, which is only gonna help with this car. Just gonna put the cable on now. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's really good. Right, with quite a lot of struggling. That has just come out. It was quite rusty in there, so... I think that should make a good connection when the new one goes in there. Brilliant. I can get on with changing these pads, then. Granted, this isn't the most interesting job in the world. A lot of drivers just do brakes at their local fast-fit garage and never engage with it. But it's taught us something about the Audi. Yes, it's a well-looked-after car, but it has been neglected more recently, and shortcuts have been taken to save money. There we go, managed to salvage that connector, and the brake pads are all changed. So, another calm, cheap and peaceful day. Who'd have thought it? It's day three on our Audi, and after much procrastination, it's time to face a rather large painting job, the whole side of the car. Um, we need to address the elephant in the room, don't we? Uh, well, well, this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I have been trying to avoid for as long as possible. Uh, you and me both, yeah, definitely. Mm. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a big job, isn't it? But once it's done, really good job done. Yeah, definitely, definitely worth it. Um, are you going to do those dents at the back? Yeah, I'll crack on with those. OK, well, I might rub this down. You can probably hear the sigh of pleasure as Will gets to knock things about with a hammer. 
this den is not going to be that easy to get out. There's no access behind it, apart from this tiny, weeny little gap. I mean, normally, you sort of try and use, like, hammers, dollies, and you can work it from both sides, you know, one side of this. But on this particular occasion, I'm going to be using things more like a slide hammer, and a slide hammer with this sort of tool on the end of it, so I can hook it up in there and gently, gently sort of tease the dent back out into the shape it should be. And then get in there with lever bars and gently manipulate the rest of it to get it as good as I can. Not looking forward to this job, to be honest. A pro repair on this would cost us as much as we paid for the whole car. So I'm going to hammer away until it looks slightly better. Well, I'm certainly not saying that that's perfect, but it's been very, very tricky to get that back into the shape that I got it to. Do you know, it's good enough. I think it will work. The most important line is the bottom one, and I've got that pretty good. Yes, tiny skimmer filler. Yes, a bit of paint. That will be a great job. A paint job like this, done professionally, would be at least a thousand pounds, so we've got no option but to take it in-house. But the job isn't limited to just the paint. Now I'm in a dent-busting mood and I need to sort out this dent at the back. It's a small one, but that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. This dent down here, when you first look at it, doesn't actually look that bad. But here's the problem. It's on a large, relatively flat panel, so the repair that we do on this has got to be good, otherwise it's just going to show. There's a couple of detailed lines along the panel as well. Now, that's my starting point. I've made this wooden punch. If I just work along those lines really gently, I'll make a good start on the job, and then I can take the rest of the ripples off the panel as I then work it up from the detailed line. What Will is trying to say is that bashing the dent out with wood is slightly softer than a hammer. Working around the dent is quite an art, and Will is pretty good at it. So you can actually take a gauge of where you are when you're working on a job. If you put a straight edge up against it, you can see what sort of curve should be, and you can see if there's a dent easy. It's a very quick, easy way of getting a very good idea of where you're going. The detailed lines are managing to come out really well. I'm getting a very good edge on those, which I'm measuring with, with my rule. Um, but there's still a ripple in the panel, which I've tried just tapping gently from behind. But because there's so much spring in the panel, I can't actually work against it. So if I use a dolly, a flat dolly, on the outside of the panel and just sort of tap next to it, I can use this as an anvil, something to take the flex out of the panel as I, as I tap it and see if it will just bring it into line. And it's not pretty. Not yet. While Will does that, I'm using the high-pressure airline to clean off the faded lacquer. Right, so I've run my rule up the, the dented area and I can see it's coming out really, really nicely. There's very few shallow points. And so I can work out where the shallow points are, the high points are. Flat block with a bit of medium sandpaper on it. Gus is sanding with a bit of 240 grit paper. And I'm priming, ready for filler. We use as little as possible. That is the golden rule. Right, I'm done. Are you done? Huh? You done? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll say I'm getting there oh. rather than actually done, but, yeah, I think we could... Um, Just going to roll it in. Yeah, get it in, get masked up. We could do... We're getting some primer on this as soon as possible now. It's starting to look pretty good. We don't have a lot of drying time left, so the race is on to get the Audi where it's ready for paint. We're quick at masking now. It's a skill that we've definitely improved on. Will has a steady hand, so he gets to prime, while I 
serenade him. Metallic paint has really put us off in the past. It's a lot more tricky to apply than the solid paints we're used to. Thankfully, the uh, primer has gone on really, really nicely and is all now prepared, ready for the base coat, which is the metallic level. It's quite exciting. The Audi will receive three top coats and three coats of lacquer once that's dry. The worrying thing is, is you never know until you've had the patience to step back for at least five minutes and wait and see how that coat has gone. It's looking pretty good. The first coat's always a very dust coat, very, very light. You can start to build it. It's a long, long day, and we work late into the evening. But what a rewarding day it's been. It's day four out of five on our cool Audi. We haven't spent much, but we haven't tackled any of the truly nasty jobs. Have we been putting them off? It would seem to me that we've spent an awful lot of time on this car already, and we've only really just got it up to the point where any normal person would buy it. Yeah, and that's not really enough to raise its head above the parapet and attract the, the niche group of people that are interested in these cars. Yeah, I mean, the thing that we saw in it, not one of the many things, is that it had a really cool interior. It's got a really good interior, but a really, really baggy uh, <laughs> headlining, hasn't it? So I am, I am about to fall on my sword and go and pull the headlining out. That's very good of you. Thank you, Gus. <laughs> So I would say that the major problem with headlinings is getting them to stay where you want them, i.e. up on the ceiling. Even the might of Ingolstadt has a problem with it. This is common with Audi hundreds. You, you might not notice it on this car because it's been cunningly concealed with thumbtacks that someone's pushed in through the lining. I don't particularly want to do it because I'm nervous that as soon as I've done it, and it's quite a lot of work to get it out, I'll get it stuck on, put it back in, come in the next day, and it'll be hanging down again. But I'm going to give it a go. This Audi 100 has a desirable electric steel sunroof, but the opening lip is particularly ugly. That's number one target today. One of my failings is that I'm a little bit ham-fisted, but I have to remove the fitting slowly and carefully. Nothing more to it than that. Look at that, the whole of the, the headlining is made of corrugated cardboard, which I find fascinating and fantastic in one way and, and deeply, deeply frightening in another. One of the small inconveniences with this car is this window not going up and down, which is pretty annoying, isn't it? And we can't sell the car like that. I've had a look inside. Yes, the wire has broken, which is pretty much the standard for this sort of mechanism. We've found an Audi parts supplier who has everything, and you can buy a whole window mechanism. A pattern part is £20 and an Audi one is £40. Our budget means we had to go for the cheaper one. This part here is the bit that goes up and down in the slider. It attaches the mechanism to the, the actual glass in the door. There's a circlip on the other side, which is impossible to get to. But Audi have made it easy for me because the actual door splits in two, so the mechanism all comes out and the glass all comes out on the other bit and gets to the other side, put it all back together, piece of cake. Well, that's the idea anyway. Let's see if it works. Well, that's a really class bit of engineering. The fiddly job is done fast, and once I've collected the motor up, we'll be in business. But now is the moment of truth. Has it fixed the job? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's now time for the black art of re-gluing the headlining. I've got my new fabric and the board layer that goes between the lining and the roof. The idea is that we glue the board with contact adhesive, keeping the layers regular and deep. Right, that's the board done. Now I've got to do the lining.
And the hideous bit now, where we lay the new fabric over the board. There is only one chance to get this right. OK, so I'm going to lower this down, yeah? I'm well, I would... Yeah, I... I got plenty I... over. Is this a good time to tell you I haven't washed my hands? No, I asked you if you'd washed your hands. Oh, I, thought, got... you, I thought you were joking. I don't know, don't know about you, but it's nerve-wracking watching from this end. It's nerve-wracking down here, too. Right, OK, am I coming down at the right speed? Yeah, you are, and then what I'll do is I'll go across this bar here. You know, you kind of want it to move in a three-dimensional way. Yeah, that's possible, isn't it? I'd yeah. say. And, and, and we'll cut this and then we'll be able to work it without the stress of this yeah. bit in it, won't we? And I say we, I'm roping well, you into doing this as well. <laughs> no. I told you I haven't washed my hands. <laughs> you didn't wash them for a reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is your heart still up in your throat, is it? Yeah, a bit, <laughs> yeah, but it's not, it's not too bad, is it? I'm, I'm going for the hoping that my jumper's clean, cleaner than my hands approach. That looks all right, doesn't it? I'll come around that yeah. side, do a bit there. We'll spare you the things that don't go exactly according to plan. There are some stumbles and a small dose of bad language. But after what feels like about a week... I'm super pleased with that. I've got to say, all I've got to do now is get it back in the car without getting it dirty or tearing it or breaking it in some way. That should be OK. We've gone that way. We have, yeah. Day five. It's the last one to complete our Audi Avant. Or Avant? Oh, it's great. Yeah, much, much better than it was, isn't it? So much better than it was. And it's up in the value of our car. Exactly that. Um, we've got a lot to do, haven't we? I've got to put that headlining in. Yes, we have. No time to waste, yeah? Cup of tea? Oh, that's a great idea. The really worrying thing about headliners is they have a terrible habit of not staying where they're put once you've got them in the car. The card headlining will attach to the roof with more adhesive and clips. It'll look prettier than the last incarnation. While I wrestle with that, more issues are coming thick and fast. Yet another thing we had not spotted before. We've got a problem with the dashboard in our Audi. The LCD screen doesn't work, and worse than that, it actually looks slightly broken as well. So, in the past, it's been OK, cos we've been able to find engineering companies that can fix things like this. But this being a slightly older car, we've had to draw in our friend Mark, who's a whiz with this sort of stuff. And we're, we're sorting the problem by buying another binnacle from another car, which isn't exactly the same model. But Mark's skill is he can tease this one apart, get the component out that we need, put it into our binnacle. End result, we have a fully functioning binnacle that we can stick straight in our Audi, and the problem is completely sorted. Without the LCD working, the Audi's interior loses a tiny, but visible, bit of its appeal. We're going to have to hope that the LCD in our used binnacle works just fine, cos if it doesn't, we're stuffed. Wow, this really is the world of tiny little screwdrivers and millions of fiddly little screws, isn't it? It's a good job I can see. Yeah, it is, cos I mean, I need my glasses on for all of that. So, so these are the components which did contain or still contains? Have you got it out it, yet? It did contain this very small LCD screen here, which um, I've now matched up with that one there. Yeah. Um, there were some very small differences, but thankfully the LCD at its core is exactly the same. So I've now removed this unit here. Yeah. <clears throat> and ready to strip that unit down, get it in there, test it, um, and then should be good to go. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to watch and learn, if you don't mind. That's fine. Um, what I'll do, I'm going to crack on and strip this unit down. Wicked. Mark is principally an electrical engineer for Mercedes, but he's able to apply his logical mind to our Audi. Just going to remove this one. Well, I'm no expert, but it looks like we're getting to the right place at the moment. We're not far off. 
This is where the business happens. OK. Our dud LCD is revealed. Day runner, yeah. A day runner. Oh, there's a song in that. I'm doing brilliantly with the headlining. Oh, my goodness. OK, um, he's all back together. Would you mind passing me the uh, rest of the instrument? Uh, there you go. I knew what you were wanting there, didn't I? Well, straight down here, yeah? Fantastic, thank you. Cool. Well, I'm a good little helper, aren't I? Not too bad. I love it when I fish for a compliment and it pays off. <laughs> <laughs> the new LCD is plugged in and working. And that's the last screw. We're all done. Oh, mate, cheers for that. You know, that is brilliant, isn't it? So it's, it's really good to know you've managed to pull all these bits to pieces, put them all back together, get it all sorted and working, and you haven't even broken into a sweat, which I find is pretty amazing. Catch you later, dude. Thank Cheers. You. Oh, the doors are open, that's why. And that looks like a finished car. We only paid 1,200 for the Audi. Braking parts were 150, and we spent 285 on electrical items, 200 on consumables, and 100 on a headlining. So that's a total of less than 2,000 pounds. Amazing value. I think this is an unusually glorious moment for us, isn't it? It's when we can finally breathe and take in the fantastic work we've done, revel in the glory of what we've done to this car. Yeah, but you did really like this car, so for you, it wasn't a massive leap. But for me, it was a bit more so. But with a little bit of time and owning it and working on it, I've started to really recognise the fact that, yeah, this is a cool car. Yes, it is a really, really nicely built car. They're fantastically made. The engineering is, is fabulous. And it turns out they're really cool, too. Mm. I think we, we try to give all our cars new leases of life, don't we, everything that comes out of the garage. And we do that to a lesser or greater extent on each car. But this car in particular, we have definitely turned back the clock on this car. It's definitely got a new lease of life, hasn't it? Yeah, I think you're, you're leading up to a butt somewhere. No. Oh, no, but I think you should drive it. I think there's still a butt. But I hate it when you drive. Now, that was the butt I thought you were going to come to. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> right, <laughs> I shall drive it, and I am going to enjoy it. You might not. <laughs> I've always liked them, and, I, and it's not just the lines of them that I like. It's the, it's, it's, it's compliance, the way it sits on the road. I uh -huh. really like. I love the. I love this interior, and I think this has held up really well. I love the five-pot engine. You know, it's power delivery. It's brilliant, isn't it? Well, it's, it is quite a special car, and in its day, this was a very special car. To go out and buy one of these new, you know, off the four cores, yeah. you had to be something pretty special in your game. You had to be well off. I mean, this is an expensive car, and it came with, you know, all sorts of, you know, modern creature comforts, such as Electric windows, yeah, which was quite special back in the day. I'm picturing in my mind airline pilot or consultant surgeon or someone with a house in Scotland and they pile the red setters yeah. in the back and the kids and they hammer off up to Scotland of a weekend. <laughs> it would do that, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. It's that sort of a car. But we've been showering this car gracefully with compliments. Surely we can find some negatives to throw into the mix of it. I don't think there should be. I don't think there has to be. I can't think of any. I mean, actually, the, the, well, the one thing I do think is negative, the biggest negative, is the same old story that I have to tell you every time that we try and sell a car. Oh, no, I can guess that already. No one wants it, yeah? Well, it's not that only, no one wants it, but no one's looking at it, no one's bidding on it, no one's calling. I did have, I did have one chap who I talked to, and uh, he said, oh, well, let me know when you've finished it. Yeah. And I phoned him up and he bought a Mercedes. <laughs> No. Just 
to, to think that we were going to sell this in the time that we've got is naive because the person will be out there and the mm. person, when they see this car, they'll want it because it's great. But it's just going to take longer, I think. Well, that is our strong point. We know we've got a good car. We know that somebody is looking for one and they come and see this one. You know, we have the confidence to know that this one's a corker and it should then sell. Yeah, it's definitely a good one, isn't it? I mean, it's just purring along, yeah, isn't it? It's beautiful. It's not a rattle. No, not anything. a single thing. I mean, it, it is just as it should be. Yeah. But good vibes alone will not fill our pockets. We advertise the Audi. We sit. <sighs> we wait. No, it's pretty good, actually. So we seem to have some interest. Interest in what? In the Audi. Oh, good, 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 Seems good. to have two people on the thread at the moment. Right, so option A... Yes? It was a Mr Burke. Mr Burke has offered 2,000 quid. OK, well, yeah. I mean, at the moment, that seems attractive, but it's not enough, is it? No, it's not. Well, it's better than option B, which is a Mr Austin, as it turns out. <laughs> oh, that might be him upgrading it. See what he's done there. Well, <laughs> that's good, isn't it? <laughs> he has just asked for what our best price is. OK, well, unless he's, unless he's going to take, uh, say, if we say four grand, he's not going to buy it, is he? No, I don't think that's the way that one's going. I, I think that we'll find somebody who, who wants an Audi 100. I would say they probably are just looking for a car, aren't they? Yeah, they're not offering serious money there. They're, that's not a good offer, either of them. I think so. we wait, don't we? Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And what does the Audi eventually go for? An internet pledge at 2,800 wins. And we say an extraordinarily grateful yes. I told you though, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> you did tell me. <laughs> I know. I never had my doubts. No.